Welcome back. Um, I don't recall whether or not I actually made a video about this, so I'll take some time now to try to cover it. Uh, there seems to be some confusion about uh, various rating systems, be it ELO, Glico, and Glico 2, and Boost Glico, and others. And uh, Glico 2, thankfully, Professor Glickman uh, published this paper. Everybody has access to it. Everybody can see it. And uh, it's the notion here is that it's supposed to expand upon the original Glico implementation, which itself is an extension of ELO, named after the Professor Arpad ELO. Um, so what Glico introduced primarily for online play, I believe, uh, is the notion of a rating deviation. And what Glico 2 further extends Glico with is the notion of a volatility per rating period. And you can get some really complicated math going if you invalidate the assumptions that are spelled out on page one of this document. Um, so uh, that said, even though I'm not a mathematician, maybe I can still say some things that are of interest. So let's have at it. Um, so this uh, can be found on Glickman's webpage. It's just glicko2.pdf on the website. You can easily find that with Google if you search for it. It's probably not just on his webpage, but various other places. But yeah, the, this example helps elucidate like what is meant by volatility and how this rating formula works. Uh, the volatility measure indicates the degree of expected fluctuation in a player's rating. Not stated here is within a rating period. But yeah, the so everybody has a rating or rating estimate, or rather this all models an estimate of how strong we think the player is. Uh, their, the player's strength is estimated as a rating. So, um, and that rating is measured not just in terms of the actual number, but also plus or minus uh, deviation of how their rating could vary within this small or large range. Um, but also there's this notion that a player's rating could fluctuate from period to period. And this uh, fluctuation, the volatility measure is high when a player within rating periods has erratic performances. So if a player has like stabilized for a long time, just consistently always as a 1200, then they go to the library, read some chess books, and start playing better, or something like that. Um, there could be reasons a player's rating might start shifting upward or shifting downward. So when a player's rating starts to fluctuate more and more, that's what this volatility factor is for. It's based on this notion of rating periods, and if you don't rate your tournaments or your games or other events um, according to the assumptions on this first page, then I don't really know whether or not this volatility helps or hurts the rating code. Like, so, anyway, I'm not a mathematician, I don't know a lot, but what I do know is that this, at least the way that this is envisioned, is that if a player has exceptionally strong results after a stable period, or exceptionally weak results after a stable period, or, you know, if things go the other way, this is what the volatility factor is used to help determine or measure. Um, and as with the original Glico system, it's usually informative to summarize the player's strength in terms of a rating interval instead of just reporting the rating. Um, so rather than putting question marks next to ratings, which some servers like to do, uh, it's better described as a 95% confidence interval, which is simply the rating R plus or minus twice the RD. 
Uh, so, for example, if the player's R is 1850 and the RD is 50, the interval would go from 1750, which is 1850 minus twice the RD, to 1950, which is 1850 plus twice the RD. And we would say that we're 95% confident the player's actual strength falls within this range. When the player has the low RD, this is a narrow interval. So we're confident about the player's range being a small interval of values. Volatility measure does not appear in the calculation of this interval. So yeah, the, the volatility measure is used elsewhere to help determine some of these other values, but does not appear in the interval itself. So, oh goodness, like you probably want to read the original glico.pdf where the original system is talked about. The, this document is simply entitled Example of the Glico2 System. Um, and let's see. Yeah, we treat a collection of games within a rating period. This is like seems to be forgotten in every implementation of Glico 2 that I've seen. Not once have I seen that at the end of a rating period, we're going to re-rate all the players, all the games that occurred during the rating period. Not once have I seen that. So um, a rating period, maybe you have a tournament every Thursday night and players never play except for in this tournament. So, yeah, if you had a, that rating period is just this weekly period, and the only games are played on tournaments on Thursday night, okay. Then that's, you just rate all the games in the tournament as having occurred at the same time. So, regardless of the ordering in which players got paired with each other, you would still treat the games as having simultaneously occurred within the rating period. Uh, if you have things beyond simply a tournament, I mean, check whatever information you can find about Boost Glico that proposes, and I think the OGS, the online Go server, I've not seen the code for it, but I've heard from the announcements that were done by the online Go server that they actually try to implement this thing called Boost Glico, where if a player's played 25 or 30 games, for that player, that's considered a rating period. And they move on to the next rating period in advance of other people doing it. And I don't know how all that works. It seems complicated to me, but otherwise you stick with this uh, 2013 definition of how ratings would work. So the inputs to the rating formula are ratings, RDs, and volatilities at the beginning of the period, all of the game outcomes, which and then um, the output is the updated ratings, RTs, and volatilities at the end of the period, which would be pre-period information for a subsequent rating period. Um, it works best when the number of games in the rating period is moderate to large, at least 10 to 15 games per player in the rating period. And like the time for the period is at the discretion of the system administrator. So... Um, the rating scale of this is different than the original Glico system scale. So yeah, there's some conversion factors in the code. Um, yeah, I think everywhere I've seen these conversion factors are in effect and uh, it's assumed that the default player rating is 1500. Uh, yes, yeah, step one, determine for each player. So you might have some new players. Um, Determine the rating and RD for each player at the onset of the rating period, which could be a carryover from the previous um, uh, period. Uh, you can also have this system constant tau, which constrains the volatility change over time. So if a player's rating fluctuates or doesn't fluctuate, uh, this tau factors into the amount that an RD changes at the beginning of a period. So a player whose rating is fluctuating will experience greater RD increases at the big at the onset of the rating period than other players would. Uh, smaller values of tau would prevent volatility measures 
uh, like so if we have smaller tau, everybody's RD would increase more or less by the same amount, even if some players are having exceptionally good performances as compared to normal. Um, so if the application is expected to in involve extremely improbable game collections, then set tau to a small value is Glickman's recommendation. In practice, I don't know that anybody's really experimented heavily with this. Um, and furthermore, if you haven't implemented the notion of a rating period, probably this step one is not getting applied consistently anyway. Um, if you're treating every game as being a separate rating period, then yeah, that's you're going to have some really interesting outcomes. Um, if the player is unrated, pick 1500 and RD of 350. Uh, assume volatility of 0.06. Again, like this volatility gets really confusing if you don't have the notion of a rating period. Um, but we'll try to walk through the rest of the formula anyway. Um, you yeah, otherwise carry over the previous rating, RD, and volatility. Convert this to the original glico scale um, so that some more math could be done upon the converted ratings compute the quantity uh, I don't know the Greek letter for this V but this is the estimated variance based on game outcomes so this formula here let's look first at this part this is the expected outcome between players, between the player and opponent J with variance J or with um, rating deviation J. And then there's this game outcome distribution function, I believe. So you project based on the player ratings and rating deviations. How do you think, um, given. Um, given this set of pairings. So player one is going to be playing players two, three, four, and five within this rating period. Given that, estimate how much do you think uh, the teams or players rating is going to change? Um, oh, I'm sorry, how much the variance is of the change? It's not what is the estimated change, but the estimation of like how widely could this player's rating vary as a result of playing this set of opponents. Uh, pre or compute then the quantity of the estimated improvement. It's not the other thing I was just talking about, but try um, to estimate how much do you think that the players improvement is going to be uh, demonstrated here. Um, again, this is based on pre-period ratings. Um, I'm actually wondering, I might not have read this all correctly. I am wondering. Because, like, this says based only on game outcomes. Um, and I'm... I guess I could look at some code to try to better understand, like, is this based on an expectation of what we think the game outcome would be? Or is this actually... Um, when it says estimated... Does this actually incorporate the real game outcomes? Um, I'm thinking it's the latter. So, yeah, I think this is, even though these use the word estimate, this, I mean, the whole rating thing is an estimation. I think this is using the game outcomes to uh, determine the variance of the teams or players rating and then the improvement that's measured here and then determine the new volatility value and this um, 
yeah, this has been revised as of February 2012 and is now stable. Uh, so you have this convergence that says, based on all the games that were played, um, we can converge upon how volatile was the player's performance um, as compared to how volatile we expected it to be. Um, so, yeah, and then this makes some new algorithm or based on the so-called Illinois algorithm. I have to really dive into this a lot further to understand why this particular procedure converges, whereas um, the previous didn't. Um, I've also seen some examples with really wonky um, numbers where things didn't converge, even though they should have. So there is still a cutoff. Um, so after doing the computations of the new volatility um, and rating deviation and performance, then we convert this back from Glico to Glico 2 scale. Um, Let's see, update the rating deviation to the new pre-rating period value based on this new volatility measure. So this is new to the Glico 2 algorithm. So again, a lot of details here, but this measure is just, is the player having an unexpectedly good or bad or otherwise, I don't know. Maybe the player's performance is typically volatile, and this time it isn't. Maybe this time their performance aligns exactly with where they're at numerically. So, um, so we compute this new volatility value, and then um, use that to determine the new rating deviation, and um, then update let's see how did this work so this is the new rating deviation which accounts for now there's a small increase in the rating deviation every period um and yeah here's based on the game outcomes uh, here's the new estimation on the player strength and the Glico scale, and then you convert the Glico back to Glico 2. And note if they don't apply, then you don't have to do this part. You just have to increase the rating deviation to say that uh, the player's rating uh, is more likely to vary in future rating periods because they didn't haven't competed in a while. Um, with the Lee chess code base a year or two back, uh, I suggested that players that were inactive for long periods of time should have this apply, even though not all the rest of this uh, algorithm was being applied at Lee chess. This step in particular, based on just has a player been inactive for a very long time? If so, then their RD should increase. Is a player just, did they get a rating of 2000 and are they like sitting on some leaderboard for one chess variant or another? Um, well, for them to stay on the leaderboard, they'll have to play more games and not just play like one game a week, but try to keep an active RD. So yeah, this uh, was an interesting discovery. Um, yeah, and then they provide some actual numbers to verify if you are implementing the same thing. You can use those tests, or these days there's plenty of reference examples to draw from, and you can see whether your code produces the same result as the reference examples. Uh, note that the resulting rating for the computation doesn't differ much from Glico 1, because the game outcomes do not provide evidence of inconsistent performance. Um, so, 
I'm trying to think about this. What could this mean? I mean, you could look at a player who's actually like playing the okay, and scroll down, that's the end of it. Um but yeah, game outcomes um are their true facts. They don't indicate like counterfactuals of things that could have been. In the same way if you're like peeking over a player's shoulder and watching them play, um, sometimes you might have insights about how strongly that player plays, but that's not reflected in game outcomes. Game outcomes reflect like how did the player actually perform. Um, so they're not going to be able to prove that performance is inconsistent. Um, it occurs to me that even in what I've seen of Glickman's future publications, I, I haven't seen any kind of measure of uh, inconsistent performance. And that might be an interesting concept to explore. Um, yeah, because being able to measure to what extent a player needs help with a given um, aspect of a game. If you could somehow measure inconsistency in a player's performance, that would probably go a long way to helping them identify what they need to do to become a more competitive player. Um, but yeah, I guess the key takeaways here, one, Glickman like, shows this is an example of the Glicko 2 system. Uh, there's other information available on his website. To Glicko 1 is actually similar in outcomes to Glicko, Glicko 2. Uh, even though wherever you go, you're probably going to find Glicko 2 implemented rather than Glicko 1. But um, Glicko 2, the whole volatility concept kind of breaks down if you don't have this rating period well defined. And, or at least I think it does. He doesn't say that it does it'd be kind of hard to prove that this only works the way that he envisioned it and that there isn't some other way that this could also work. But yeah, I do wonder. I don't know. The good news is that uh, this science, it's all published. The reference examples are freely available and are open source so motivated individuals can experiment with this sort of stuff and see for sample data what tends to predict game outcomes and future rating periods most accurately you could run experiments modify things run more experiments and see can you improve the predictive accuracy of your model you could try different rating system constants to see how those affect um, accuracy of the predictions but yeah i think this um this notion here in the second paragraph on page one that uh, uh first sentence here treat a collection of games to have occurred simultaneously it's something i haven't seen um, but maybe that's only because the OGS code isn't open source. So it's possible that maybe OGS implements this correctly and might be the only site ever that's done that. I have a copy of the free internet chess server code. It seems not to implement this literally. I've looked at the Lee chess code. It seems not to implement this. I've looked at Lee Chess forks. We haven't seen them implement this. Maybe I should consider. Yeah, maybe I could try doing this for Lee Shogi. See whether or not um, I can predict ratings or predict outcomes more accurately by actually implementing what's suggested here. Um, but yeah, also another takeaway is that. Like, this can be a really expressive way to show a formula uh, rating is the uh, rating estimate 
plus twice the RD and minus twice the RD. Um, this has confused users in the past. Leech us at one point did display ratings in s such a way so it would show like 1850 plus or minus 100 with like the plus minus symbol and players just didn't understand that. So it got replaced with a question mark and players don't understand that either. And that's unfortunate. Um, are there other key takeaways here? Um, I'm not sure. One thing a lot of players are confused about is why do chess.com ratings and Lee Chess ratings differ so much? Well, for a while it's because Lee Chess um, had ratings uh, different with a different default value than uh, chess.com had. It wasn't out of some interest of expanding the player base or something like that. It was just simply that Lee Chess ratings defaulted to 1500 and chess.com ratings defaulted to something different. Um, um, but yeah, I think that's it. Um, the rating system works best when there's a large sample size of games per period. Um, but also the period duration is at the discretion of the administrator. Um, because the other takeaway is that this is not the only paper out there that Glickman's written. You can find other things either... You can find some of his older publications and you can find people talking about some of his later work, although I don't think it's published in this kind of form. Um, but yeah, there's a lot to be learned, and thankfully the open source community will eventually figure this out. Who knows how long it'll take, but yeah, maybe I should try to do this with the Lee Shogi codebase, see what comes up. Um, yeah, this doesn't really... Uh, Glickman, I think, separately? No, I'm confusing that with Reagan. Ken Reagan uh, published a paper about intrinsic performance ratings, which look at the quality of plays during a game and use that to try to estimate player strength. That's something different. Um, so, yeah, again, uh, there's a lot of re reference examples. It's important to test with a good data set. I do wonder over time if Kaggle will have more data sets and more problems that are similar to this one. So to help players and statisticians and other folks, um, you and I better understand how this all works. But yeah, this is my attempt to go through Glickman's great work that's inspired quite a few people uh, developing all their own sites and hopefully I've helped elucidate this a little bit but there's still a lot I guess I have to learn too.